Hey, welcome back. In today's episode of Extreme Reloading, we're going to be talking about focusing on primer pocket, both in uniforming those things up and cleaning up the flash holes. So to get started, let's go over to our RCBS case prep station. All right, this is the uh, RCBS case prep station. We're going to use most of these stations, uh, save for this one here. This is uh, just a primer pocket brush, especially useful on uh, once fired or previously fired brass. Uh, so we really don't, don't need to make use of this one. And uh, this one is, is, is very important for a first time prepping brass. This is our primer pocket uniforming uh, unit. And what we're going to do with that is make sure that these primer pockets are very uniform. Now what I mean by that is not so much the um, shape of the primer pocket, not that it's perfectly circular, but what I'm more interested in is how deep is that primer pocket? How far uh, is that primer pocket recessed into the case itself? And uh, I'll show you here with the, uh, with the micrometer that there is variability in primer pocket depths as they come as they come from the factory. So um, here's our uh, mic, um, digital caliper actually, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run out this portion of it right down here, this little pin, okay, and I'm going to insert this case so it, the uh, primer the base of the primer pocket makes contact with this here and then I'm going to force it forward until it seats against the uh, caliper itself. Now notice that this is 0 0.1285. We're going to run it out a little bit more again. Grab a second one. Okay. Another case, same thing. Okay, there it's steady that um, actually a thousandth different. This is 1295. And once again, run it out, make seating against it here. See that right there, seat this against it, then push. This one's nice, one, two, nine, five, so same as the previous one. But you see, we do have variability, and we want to remove that variability so we have as much uniformity and consistency as possible. I'm gonna shut off this mic now, caliper. The other two, now this is working on the primer pockets right over here. These other two are for the case mouths. Um, and I like to make sure that I have a nice chamfer on the inside, that's what this thing does, and um, and then we'll deburr the outside of it with this thing. Now we didn't do any trimming on these cases; they came uh, very very nicely from the factory for us. These remember are Lapua cases, so I'm just going to run this uh, onto the chamfer first, and then just a real quick touch back here. Uh, to take off any burrs that may have been caused by the chamfering process. Last but not least, I'm going to run this um, on this uh, uh, neck brush to get out any little filings that may have been left. So this is electric, takes the hard work out of it. I'm going to skip this and skip this, go directly here. Now one thing that I notice is that when you're um, trying to clean up and uniform up these primer pockets. Uh, that's the very first time you do this, or the, when you're doing this on brand new brass, it can be um, kind of start torquing your hands out, or there's a lot of twist on it, uh, and the the whole case wants to slip a little bit. Real quick fix is right there. Got these rubber faced gloves from Harbor Freight. Really cheap. When they wear out, they wear out. You toss them away, but these give me a nice grip, and I can do this much easier. There we go. There we are. Nice looking primer pocket. 
We're going to hit it here. A little bit of a chamfer. Take off any uh, burring that is necessary. You might be able to see that chamfer. That one's done. Same process. When do you know you got enough done? Well, you'll feel it. It's very easy. It turns very easy. It, like, it doesn't make contact anymore with the case. And then that's as much as you're possibly going to do. So that's done. Well, I've got 98 more to do. That's the process. I'm going to uh, get working on these. I want to show you a close-up of this uh, primer pocket tool. That's this one here. Now see what it does? This, there's no cutting surface right here. This is just a base and your cutting surface is from here to give you a uniform cutting depth. Alright, well we finished all 100 of those cases and uh, you know the proof is in the pudding of course. So let's get our uh, digital caliper back out. I'm going to zero it here. And uh, we're going to take a look at those same two cases that we measured earlier. Again, I'm going ahead and extending this here. This is the first one that we did. Inserting that there, giving it a gentle push inward. There's our depth, 0 0.130. Remember this was earlier, 0 0.1285. Now extending this again. Zero point one three zero again. And that's exactly what we're gonna get by using this primer pocket tool here. Now let's think this through. What in the world does it do for us? Well, if the depth of these primer pockets is exactly the same, and it's very, very close to that now for all 100 cases, then the primer, when it's set in here, will sit and allow a certain amount, the same amount, of space between the primer itself and the top or the ceiling of that primer pocket, thereby helping to ensure a more uniform ignition. This is the Lyman flash hole uniformer. Right now I have it set up for the 220 Swift. The only setting is on uh, exactly where this, where this uh, stop sits uh, on the shaft. And uh, I don't know if you realize it or not, but the 220 Swift is a larger, substantially larger case than the 243 Winchester that we're really focusing on uh, throughout this, these episodes. This is the 243 Winchester, which as you know is, is built on the 308 Winchester, 7.62 by, uh, by 51 case. And uh, this is the 220 Swift. Yes, it's just a 5.56 caliber compared to a, a 6 millimeter um, a case, 243 over here. But it's, it's actually quite a bit larger case. And I really like the 220 Swift. It is fantastically fast, very accurate, uh, and really one of my uh, favorite cartridges, favorite rifles uh, for varmint hunting. So we need to have this cutter, it looks like a drill bit, uh, extending just through the uh, the flash hole. So to do that, it's really simple. These are a one size fits all type of thing. We'll need a hex key. Okay, hex key set. We're going to back out or loosen this hex key right over here. 
loosen it up just enough. All right, this is now loose and it moves freely. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert from the mouth of the case. Now I can see all, all, uh, already that the flash hole on this one is a little bit small. So I'm going to run that flash hole open. Okay, there we go. The uh, cutter drill tip, if you want to call it that, is now um, extended beyond the flash hole itself. And uh, what's happening is we're starting to cut a little bit of a bevel on the inside of that flash hole to help uniform it up and uh, make for a more consistent ignition of the uh, of the powder. So this is good. Set this again. Now we're going to run this to here. So as you are cleaning up those flash holes, you want to take a look uh, at these things before you consider them done. Sometimes you might see some burrs left in there. Well, this isn't done yet. We've got a few more turns. I noticed three to four or five, maybe six turns on that tool tends to get it in real good shape. And you're going to see a little bevel on the inside of this thing uh, when it's done correctly. There we go. This one's done. It's the same case. You see that little bevel right down on the bottom of it. That's what we want. All right, 100 cases. Nice uniform primer pockets, very consistent flash holes, a little bit of a beveling inside of it. You can see we have a nice chamfer put on the inside of those case mouths, deburred the outside as well. Now if you think that uh, flash hole uniforming is a waste of time, well, just take a look at this. This is all the brass cuttings that I took out from the inside of that of those cases. I think it's well worth the little bit of effort. Not too hard to do. Yeah, it takes some time, but we've got some extremely uniform cases. All right, let's recap all the work that we've done in these primer pockets. Number one, We've used the RCBS case prep station to make sure that our primer pocket depth is as uniform as we can possibly make it. That means that when we seat the primer in using the positive ram priming die that we're going to use later on, then we know that the position of the primer relative to the primer pocket is going to be as consistent as possible round after round, shot after shot. Next, we spent quite a bit of time on those flash holes. Now again, this is something that you just do the very first time that you're prepping cases. You certainly don't do this each and every time that you reload. But a couple of things are important to note on those flash holes. Number one, I've noticed that in some of the cheaper brass, the flash holes themselves are not centered inside the primer pocket. This is going to give you very poor uniform ignition. And that's because that flash hole is supposed to be set directly over the top of the anvil of the primer itself. Now if you find a case like that, you simply got to chuck it or put it into a pile of, of cases that you're going to shoot, but it's not going to be part of your precision ammo. The flash hole tool also did another thing for us. Remember, put that bevel on the inside. And I think that's going to give us, again, a more consistent ignition out into the powder inside that case. Now, at this point, we've done absolutely everything we can possibly do to help ensure as uniform ignition as possible. And this is where it all starts, really. So we're taking great care, great pains, to make sure that we have uniform ignition into that powder charge uh, and away it goes downrange. Until next time, this is Extreme Reloading.